Hallelujah. I want to ask you a question. What are you looking for tonight? What are you looking for God to do tonight? What did you come looking for tonight? I came looking for the Lord, for his presence. I, come to look, I came to look for him to, to walk through that door. I come to look for signs and wonders and miracles because that's who he is. And he knows the need of each and every person here. And Lord God, I just lift you up tonight, God. Lord God, I worship you and I magnify your name, God. Lord God, I count, count it an honor and privilege to be able to come before you. Lord, you are God of miracles, God, signs and wonders, oh God. You know each and every one of us, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. You know us, God, and you know what we stand in need of, God, to finish this journey, Lord God, to go through, Lord God, whatever it is that, that's ahead of us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. But God, we trust you, Lord, tonight, God, knowing that you're able to do more than we could ask, think, or anything, God, because that's who you are, God. You are miracle working, God. You are all powerful, God. And we thank you for who you are, God. And we lift you up. And we expect you to move tonight, God. We draw upon you tonight, God, by the Spirit of the Lord to provide, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that nobody would leave here the way that they came. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that we will position ourselves under the spout where the glory comes out, God. In Jesus' name, move by your spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you and we praise you, oh God. We bind the works of the enemy that comes to rob, to kill, to steal, and destroy in the name of Jesus that would try to hinder the move and the power and the working of God. I encourage you tonight to lift up your voice and to praise your God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead, lift up your voice. Pray in the spirit if you have to. Give him a praise for something. Lord, I thank you that Lawrence didn't die. Lord, he's still alive, and Lord, we, we loose this anointing into that room in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Don't live your life melancholy. Get excited about something. If you can't get excited about what Jesus has done for you, what the Holy Spirit's leading you through, how much the Father loved you to set all that up for you, then you can't get excited. Woo! Lady at the post office said to me the other day, you're always happy. Why? I said, because my sins are forgiven and I'm going to heaven. Amen. What else can get you down when you got that little as your resume? Our sins are forgiven. That's a big deal for you, Sig. <laughs> See, Alan, I'm giving you a break. I, I am. I, I thought, Alan Sig, Alan Sig. Thank you, Father. So whatever you want to do tonight, Holy Spirit, just pray in the Spirit a little bit before we go online. Lord, we thank you for our covenant language. Holy Spirit, pray for this service tonight through us. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let a spirit of worship fall in this place. Let a spirit of gratitude, thankfulness, appreciation, Lord, for all you've done. I love you tonight, Lord. Help us to love each other like you love us, Lord. Thank you for the love of God. Amen. Let's worship.
Thank you, Lord. Whew. Just enjoy his presence. Don't take it lightly. Just enjoy it. Thank you, Father. Come on up. I used to have hair like that. <laughs> it's skin colored now, though. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Some of you might not. Jeremiah Engel. Jeremiah Engel is entering the Navy this week. <laughs> Mom and Dad, come on up with him. If you want somebody to record it for you, somebody will. Thank you, Lord. What a shift in your life is about to happen. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's like going from the playground to varsity. You were a hockey player, right? I saw a couple blurbs about you on the internet. You guys did pretty good, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Amen. So tell me, tell her, what made you decide to go into the Navy? Um, probably like serving is like the biggest thing. And, um, Maybe like job security and stuff like that, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Um, I want to make it like a good experience for myself, so like in the future I can right. provide and stuff. Amen. Let me. I'll tell you right now, it's going to provide for you a sense of discipline that you've not really experienced in school. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a discipline that you'll be able to access all through your life, from from the early twenties right right through the end. Uh, Richard, uh, now Richard had that experience in the Marine Corps, so I want him to pray over you and bless you as you go. But I also lived on a Navy ship for about seven months. The Guadalcanal is a uh, helicopter aircraft carrier. And that thing was so stinking huge, we used to jog on the top of it. So, <laughs> so I ate plenty of Navy food, went to the Navy schools because I was a helicopter mechanic. So I had a lot of Navy in me. <laughs> So I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to tell you something. You have no idea the blessing that's in store for you. I did four years. I'm living in my fourth house before I was at the VA. You get what I'm saying? When you get an honorable discharge, it is as good or better than a college education. Because once you get out, you'll sign up with the state as a veteran, and you go to the top of every civil service test. All you have to do is pass it, and you go right to the top, past all the college degrees. On and on, so I'm telling you, I know. So let me bless you. Father, I bless this young man. Lord God, I stir up your spirit that's in him, Father. I pray, Lord God, you would keep him in a place of holiness and sanctification, Lord God, and give him wisdom and understanding to excel, Lord God, to truly become a member, one of a team, Lord God. There will be no I in it. He will be part of a team. Father, I pray you would bless him with the determination and the strength, both spiritual and natural to do that which he needs to do to get through boot camp and to conduct his life. Father, I ask that you guide him into, into an MOS, Lord God, that will bless him even, even when he leaves, Lord God, that will prepare his future, Lord God. This move that he is making now is a move for the future. I ask this wisdom in what he's doing, Father. So I, I pray, Lord God, that you would bless him to stand up to the challenge, and not only to the challenge, Lord God, but even as he finds himself changing from a young man to a mature man, Amen. that he will walk <laughs> He will walk rightly before you. There will be a new strength, Lord God, that, that's added to his life from the self-discipline that he'll get, even from knowing the great accomplishment that he's done, Father. This is a move for the future. This young man is looking ahead at the future. So I bless him, and I bless his future. I decree in the name of Jesus he will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. All the days of his life will be fulfilled in divine health and blessings and prosperity. And I bless his whole time in the Navy, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And, Lord, we just commission angels to go with him, yeah. to watch over, to protect him. We say no nothing, no, nothing will befall you in any type of way that would harm you. In the name of Jesus, we put the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ all over you. And we say, rise and let the favor of God be upon you. Lord, even let his instructors see the favor of God on his life 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, brother. You got to have a word? Okay. And I pray for his parents and his grandmother. And is it a, a brother? Is it a brother back there? Yeah, I pray for great peace and confidence and that your prayers will be directive, that you will, you will know that there's, there's times of potential danger and you will war on it, and he will not even necessarily know what he's been spared. But you will see yourself as a part of the team, and uh, this, this phase of your parenting is, as, uh, is it, the next thing, but it's just as important as everything else. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. And I want to pray for your, you. Come here. Because I know how, how it was. When Julianne moved down the street in an apartment when she went to college, and Cheryl had a fit. <laughs> I'm like, Cheryl, she's only a half a mile away. <laughs> yeah, but she's gone, you know. Okay. I know that's hard on mommies. Father, right now, I thank you for this new level of intercession that this mother will come into for her son. Lord, I thank you that you understand the love of a, of a, a parent to a son. The first words you said in 400 years is, this is my beloved son. And Father, you know what it feels like to love a son more than yourself. And Lord, I thank you for this mother right now. And Lord, give her the, the, the strategies, give her the confidence, give her the faith, give her the decrees and the declarations, Lord, to watch over in prayer her son as he's on this new journey of his life, this new phase of his life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, be blessed. Keep us posted. Thank you, Lord. I pray for Deborah Landwell and her, her three, you know, the three girls that come up? They're all in the Air Force now. They're all in the Air Force. They're in basic training. And so they were, down, they were in L.A. dancing, and that all shut down with COVID. And so they looked at each other and said, well, what are we going to do now? And they, their mother and father met in the Air Force. Deborah and her husband were in the Air Force. And they said, let's get in the Air Force, you know. <laughs> and, uh, of course, their father's happy because after that they can go to college and he doesn't have to write checks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. But it's, it's, it's just phenomenal. I was in Israel, and they were walking. In Israel, you have to do two years in the military, all, every, every child. And I was in this old city of David, and they were walking probably groups of 20 to 30 teenagers through, and they were explaining David, King David, and his victories. They were explaining his son and all that he established and the, the things that he did and the victories and the songs that were written about him. And these kids were like all ears. It was just amazing to see them getting biblical history from the leaders of their country. And they're in the military for two. They get discipline. I, I I look at some of the news broadcasts of our streets, and I think some of these kids have never had discipline. Yeah. They've never had no said to them. It's it's all. And so, Lord, we ask for a new wave yeah. of godly discipline to come into our country, for especially for the young people, Lord, that they would know right from wrong and yes from no in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Dar, why don't you come up? Do you want to do it now? When would, would you like private ministry, or would you mind if we did it now? Private. Okay, that's good. All right. Testimonies. As some of you know, um, I work for a synagogue, and... Um, this week, there was a voice message that came through from a woman, and uh, she wanted a call back, so I called her back. And she and her husband, I guess, have been really battling a lot of things. In two months, they've been to 10 doctors, and she was facing surgery the next day on her eyes, and she was very upset, and she wanted to go into the, into the sanctuary. She, her and her husband wanted to go in to just be before the Lord which touched me greatly because I don't get that request that often. Um, and, and, of course, it was granted. The, the rabbi said she could do that. But as she was speaking, the Lord just began to impress upon me that he wanted to give her a blessing of healing. So I said to her, and now just keep in mind that I don't proselytize. Um, you know, I, I'm very respectful of what they believe. Um, but 
I just really felt that the Lord wanted me to pray for her. So I said, do you mind if I pray for you? And she said, oh, no, go ahead. I said, I, I want you to know, because a lot of them don't know this, but I want you to know I'm a Christian. I'm not Jewish. She said, oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so, um, and so I, I prayed, and I prayed the way we pray. I made declarations over her. Uh, it wasn't probably what she was used to, but, you know, I went ahead. And um, at the end, I was going to, and I usually will say in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, which is Jesus the Messiah. And so I got to that, and I said in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, and right after that, because I just did what I normally do, I said in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so <laughs> then I thought, oh, I, I hope I didn't offend her by, by doing that. And, but I didn't say anything, and she was so blessed by that prayer and then the Lord began, he led me into this. I, this was nothing that was planned on my part. I began to share with her how, how God loves the Jewish people. And I went into the Old Testament, and I started to share things from the Old Testament. And she, by the time it was all over with, she was like really, really, really blessed and couldn't thank me enough. So a day after her surgery, I e emailed her, and I said, you know, how did you have the surgery? Is everything fine? She wrote back, she said, oh yes, it went fine. And she said, and I went back the next day and the doctor was amazed that the, my pressure in my eye had gone down so far and so low. I, I, you know, to God be the glory, to God be the glory on that. And she thanked me so much for that special prayer that I prayed for her. So I want to encourage you to step out in those cir circumstances where it might be a little uneasy um, because there are people really hurting out there. And, and just to show that you care, uh, that's really what y you know, makes a big, big difference in people's lives. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Heavenly Lord, Father, Lord, I just lift up this congregation, Lord, and I just pray that you would give each one of us uh, uh, that boldness that we need to step out, Lord, to just step out when you show us inside. There's always that feeling you'll get inside that that's what you have to do. You'll give us that go-ahead. You'll give us that green light. Let us respond to those green lights, Lord. Let us not hold back and then regret that we did that because you have a blessing for someone, and you want that blessing to come through us. That's how you've set it up. That's how you've arranged it. So, Lord, let us not hold back. Lord, I just, uh, I, I just anoint each person with that ability to step out in, in faithfulness and confidence that the Lord is with them and that they need have no fear. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. July 4th, I was invited to my daughter's house. They were having a, uh, uh, you know, July 4th celebration. And they asked us to bring the crabs. <laughs> it cost me about 30 pennies. I mean, <laughs> the, the nice size was going for like, what was it? Uh, my wife says, okay. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so I had to pay for them. But just going along, with what, what Leslie was saying is that um, we have to be moved by the Lord. I'm not afraid to share the gospel, but I need wisdom and when to do it. Or I'm not afraid to stand up for Christ. I ain't afraid at all. But sometimes it's better to use wisdom and look for the proper time. So anyway, we went to the party and, and uh, you know, my son, my kids don't uh, think the way I think. That when they were younger, they did. But So we want to have peace and just have a good time. So I determined I just want to have a good time there. So some other couples came in, and uh, I was just being a nice guy. And then they got to talking about <laughs> Jesus in the other room. And then my wife started, they started prophesying over everybody. So I said, okay, church is starting now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is good. So I'm sitting out with the guys in the kitchen, and we're eating crabs and talking. And uh, I'm being a nice guy, you know, trying to stay away from politics. <laughs> Good, Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Like that, that commercial there. <laughs> so anyway, make a long story short, we're talking, and um, I said, well, here's my opportunity. So I started talking to, it was myself and another guy. I started asking, you know, about whether or not he was saved, and he was saved, and if he spoke in tongues, and he didn't speak in tongues. I said, really? I said, well, 
I began to explain to him why you need to. It's available to you. I said, I'm not going to twist your arm, but if you want to, I'll pray for you right here, and God will fill you with the Spirit. So I laid hands on him, and after a while, that man became, he began to cry. And then he began to speak in tongues. Now, the interesting thing is this. He did six years in prison for homicide. And I thought, let's take the strangest thing right here. This fella is an ex-con, and I'm a retired trooper. <laughs> so they knew the player for him. <laughs> but he knew about me. I didn't know about him. But the point of the matter is I, I'm using wisdom now so that I don't have to fight with people, but just looking for the open opportunity, open door. Look for the open door. Look for it, and he'll show it to you. And then you can step in and do what God has called you and anointed you to do. And I tell you, we had church that day over my daughter's house. Praise God. <laughs> one, one more thing for the young fella. When you go into boot camp, you might feel a little lonely after a while. But you know what's going to happen? After you get out of boot camp and they start paying you that good money, all of a sudden you're going <laughs> to forget about the loneliness and you're going to begin to develop an image where you, you would like to go home, but you know you have another life somewhere else. And it'll give you a great confidence in your life. It'll bless you. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Come on, Je Jeff, right? Mark, <laughs> why do I call you Jeff all the time? <laughs> well, let him have it, Harry. <laughs> okay, Bob, thanks. Uh, so praise God. So um, my name is Mark Gerritsen. Uh, I've been coming here. F uh, well, I came here with Jim Tortorisi about a year ago, a year and a half ago, and um, the Lord just told me to keep coming back here. Uh, there's a special spirit here, and that Holy Spirit is uh, dispensed in this room and in this body, and I get so encouraged. And I, I, I Mondays I dedicate towards ministry, and uh, my day church is Bayshore Christian Fellowship with Mike Shahid uh, up in Keyport, and we've walked that town seven times uh, with a group of people and praying in tongues, and it was for us and we've got that town and we went to minister talk about opportunities we went to minister uh, uh, last Monday uh, just walking around people now what we what we're doing now is we're we're bringing the power of God into the waterfront and we're just walking around people and getting words of knowledge amongst ourselves okay so what we're doing as we walk it's like like we I, the same guy walked by two weeks in a row and I, and I went his wife died and I just knew it I just I could see it on him I could feel it in me and and we were just praying for his his heart and then some guy walked up with a dog and he's like you know his little dog gizmo his name is Carlos and he's speaking in Spanish and we got all these Spanish speaking people there and it was wonderful and then Mike my uh, my friend Mike just goes can I pray for you and he goes would you do that and he put his hand right on his heart and blessed him and it was incredible. He goes, what did you just do? He felt something on his heart, like a heaviness. And then he went, I said, come to church next Sunday. And we took, and, and matter of fact, it was right down from his house. These are opportunities. These are wonderful opportunities that we have. And it, it's amazing. He showed up at church. Carlos showed up at church today. And, um, I was just so blown away at what God can do so quickly. It's, it, he can do anything at any time. Do not doubt it. Do not doubt it. So it's wonderful. And this is going to happen. We're going to get out there, and we're going to do amazing things for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I wasn't going to say anything, but his little blurb there brought a blurb to me that I've been thinking about for really a, more than a week. Uh, many of you know uh, Willie Jock went home to be with the Lord. And uh, uh, you may have remembered him down at the Seaview meeting when he ministered and welcomed the African Americans into the. I mean, it was heavy what he did. And I, I love Willie. That's, I, I mean, and I know he's, he had a hard time when he lost his wife. And uh, they're together again with the Lord now. So <laughs> he's not missing me, I know right now, but I think of him every now and then. And you know, isn't it funny when you think of a person that's, that's passed on, 
what it is you remember. Sometimes it's a really good thing, sometimes it's not so pleasant. When I think of Willie Jock, I think of the phrase that he coined. We released forgiveness to those who did not ask for forgiveness. Ooh, boy, I just almost fell over on that one. If there's a legacy that he has that I believe he imparted to all of us down at, at Galloway meeting was that he released forgiveness as a Native American for the atrocities that were committed to the United States government, and they never asked for it. That's one of the things I think is missing in our culture today. We think everything else, everything ought to be rectified, everything ought to be paid, we ought to get a check for, you know, I mean, I have Irish in me, the Irish were mistreated, I ought to get a check, at rep, you know. Somebody ought to tell me I'm sorry, or they're sorry for what they did. He found forgiveness in the Lord, and he extended that forgiveness through his life to those who didn't ask for it. Think about, I mean, just think about that for a second. To those who didn't ask. And so, Lord, I just honor Willie Jock now. Thank you for our interactions. I thank you for our, the love we shared for each other, the way we kidded each other. He called sure a little white squirrel. <laughs> we were eating uh, breakfast in, in Delaware, and we are sitting outside. It was during COVID. And a little white albino squirrel came down out of a tree and, and was on the lawn right in front of us. And from that point on, Cheryl was, hey, little white squirrel. <laughs> Cheryl took a picture of it. Make an impact on somebody this week. Just one. I want you to just make an impact on one person. Somehow, some way. Whether it's just grabbing their hand and saying a prayer for them, patting them on the back, or just prophesy something about their count. You do something. I'm just saying you have to do something. Don't go up to the plate and never swing. You're never going to do anything if you do that. Go up and swing. You may miss. I'll never forget. I heard Mahesh Chavda's uh, testimony. He prayed for this man who died in Africa. He prayed for, I think, 18 hours straight, laid at, at his feet, praying that he would come back to life. And he didn't. And he was very upset. And he said, Lord, why didn't you come back to life? What's going on? Didn't you hear my, I don't understand. And the Lord spoke to him and said, I just wanted to see if you would pray. He's with me. But I saw your heart. When you start dealing with people out on the street, don't do it because you feel an obligation that you have to do something. Do it because you can feel that heart in your heart. And you want to minister to that person from your heart. We've got to get back to the love of God. Not ministry do's and don'ts and this will work and this won't work. We have to get back to the love of God. And so when I think of Willie Jock, I think of a man who had the love of God oozing out of him. That's my goal. Should be your goal too. Just to have that love ooze out of him.